Hello friends. In our session on the foreign exchange market, we have defined exchange rate as price of one currency in terms of another. Specifically, it is the amount of domestic currency required to purchase one unit of foreign currency. There are at least three popular theories of exchange rate determination. The purchasing power parity theory, the monetary approach and the asset market model. In this session, we are going to examine the earliest among them, namely the purchasing power parity theory. Welcome to the video. The purchasing power parity theory, which is considered as one of the simplest and earliest model of exchange rate determination, was generally attributed to the work of Swedish economist Gustavo Kesel. Even though the intellectual origin of this theory can be dates back to the writing of the British economist David Ricardo. Now, purchasing power parity theory rests on the principle of law of one price which states that in the presence of competitive market structure and absence of transportation cost and all other barriers of trade, then identical products which are sold in different markets will be sold at the same price when expressed in terms of the same currency. The law of one price is based upon the idea of perfect good arbitrage. Arbitrage occurs when economic agents exploit price differentials to provide riskless profit. The purchasing power theory believes that the exchange rate adjusts to ensure the law of one price. Then, if goods and services do in fact obey or they follow the principle of law of one price, then the absolute level of exchange rate should be that level that causes trade in goods and services to have the same price in all countries which is essentially the law of fund price now the purchasing power parity theory comes in two forms one based on a strict interpretation of the law of fund price which is known as absolute purchasing power parity theory the other is basically a weaker variation which is known as a relative purchasing power parity theory now we will begin by examining what is the nature of the absolute purchasing power parity theory. As I said, it's a strict interpretation of law of one price. It states that the equilibrium exchange rate between two currencies will be equal to the ratio of price level in the countries. R is equal to P by P star, where R is the exchange rate, P is the general price level in the home country, P star is the general price level in the foreign country. For example, if a kilogram of wheat cost dollar one in United States and rupees five in India, the exchange rate should be like something like this: rupees five equals dollar one. So the law of one price holds for all goods that those prices and exchange rate will adjust so that price of the given bundle of goods will be same in both countries. Now the absolute purchasing power parity theory implies that a rise in the home country currency or home country's price level related to that of foreign price level will lead to a proportional depreciation of home currency against the foreign currencies. But this absolute version is unlikely to hold because of its very rigid assumption. And the presence of transportation costs and other barriers of trade might in fact uh, invalidate the validity of the absolute purchasing power parity model. Now we will shift our focus to the relative purchasing power parity theory, which is expected to hold even in the presence of the distortions of international trade. It says that, a changes in the exchange rate over a period of time will be proportional to the relative changes in the price level in the two countries over the same period. Now, if we let the subscript 0 refer to the base period and 1 to the subsequent period, the relative purchasing power parity theory states that R1 equals P1 by P0 divided by P1 star by P0 star into R0. While R0 
is the base period exchange rate, R1 is the subsequent period. P1 by P0 means the relative changes in the price level in the home country. P1 star by P0 star means the relative changes in the price level in the foreign country. That is, the purchasing, relative purchasing power parity theory argues that the changes in exchange rate will be proportional to the changes in the price level. That is, it relates to the changes in exchange rate to changes in price level in the two countries. So, exchange rate will be equal to the initial period exchange rate multiplied by the ratio of the price level or price index in the home country to the price index of that of the foreign country. So, it implies that if the prices in the home country are rising faster than the prices in the partner country, then home currency will depreciate. On the contrary, if the prices in the home country are rising slower than the prices in the partner country, home currency will appreciate. Means that given the initial base period exchange rate, the equilibrium exchange rate in the future date will reflect the relative rates of price changes in the two countries. Now that is the relative version of the purchasing power parity theory. Now we will shift our focus to the empirical studies with respect to the purchasing power parity theory. Now the movement of the flexible or floating exchange rate after the Jamaica Accords of 1973 stimulated great resurgence in the interest in the purchasing power parity theory which led to a numerous empirical studies to test the validity of the purchasing power parity theory. Number of economists like Frankel, Kravis, Lipsy, McKinnon, Levick, so on, has analyzed the validity of the purchasing power parity theory. Now we will summarize the main findings. It found that purchasing power parity theory works very well in the cases of highly traded commodities, but it works less well in the cases of all traded commodities. Not at all well in the cases of non-traded commodities. That is, purchasing power parity theory works very well only in the case of highly traded commodities. Then, the theory holds good in the case of a very long period. Works reasonably well over very long periods of time covering two or three decades. Which means that, Purchasing power parity theory holds better in long run rather than in short run. Again, purchasing power parity theory performs better for those countries who are geographically close together having high trade linkages. One of the general consensus among the study was that the exchange rate was found to be much more volatile than the corresponding national price level. That means that national price level alone is not the determinant of the exchange rate. Now, moving towards the criticism of purchasing power parity theory, we can classify the criticism under three heads. The first one relates to assumption underlying the law of one price. As we said, this theory strongly based upon the principle of law of one price. But the law of one price itself is based on number of restrictive assumptions like absence of transportation cost, absence of tariff and other barriers of trade like. So since these assumptions are unrealistic, as, as this model which is based upon the law of one price may not be accepted. The second problem is that of defining a common bundle of goods or bundle of commodities. Since the model says that the exchange rates are determined by the price indices, but different countries attach different weights while calculating their price indices. So obviously, which cannot be comparable because different countries use different kinds of weights to measure their exchange rate. So you cannot compare the price index of one country with the price index of other country. So obviously, you cannot analyze the purchasing power parity there as well. The third and final problem is with respect to the presence of non-traded commodities. 
certain commodities never comes into trade even if certain countries are having comparative advantage we call these commodities as non traded commodities which creates a number of problems for purchasing power parity theory because this theory is less likely to hold if non traded commodities are included which is often been supported by our empirical findings thus we have seen the basic premise of the purchasing power parity model it states that the exchange rates are determined by the price level or the changes in exchange rates are caused by the changes in price level but empirical studies have shown that the changes in the exchange rates are much more volatile than the changes in price level further the theory does not explain what in fact determines the price level these are the themes of the subsequent theories hope that this video is useful to you you can always visit our blog www.skpeco.blogspot.in until next time stay safe happy learning thank you